Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're going to give you an example of what a solution to, the, to a differential equation looks like. So without actually showing you various techniques for various types of differential equations, we'll just start with a real simple one. Here we have the x dt equals x squared, and so what we're trying to find is what is x equal to. And remember, x is not a number, x is actually a function of t. All right, how do we find that? Well, in this case, we're going to what we call separate the variables. Here we have dx dt, so on the same term we have an x and a t, same variable on the same term, we don't want that, we want to separate them. We want to bring the t over here and then we want to bring the x squared down here. So the first thing we're going to do is write it as dx divided by x squared equals dt. So now what we call, we separate the variables, all the x's on the left side and all the t's are on the right side. And that is one of the techniques, but don't worry too much yet about this technique. We'll go through all the techniques very systematically in future videos. Here we just want to get a feel of what a solution looks like and what it means to solve a differential equation. A uh, matter, it's a pretty simple one here. So now what we do is we take the x squared, bring it to the numerator, write as x to the minus 2. So x to the minus 2 times dx is equal to dt. All right, now we can go ahead and integrate both sides of the equation. So we integrate the left side and we integrate the right side. So that means that when we integrate this, we get x to the minus 1 divided by minus 1. So we add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, plus a constant of integration, let's call it c1. And that is equal to, when we integrate that, we get t plus we add a constant of integration, we'll call it c2. We can combine the two constants and just simply call it c. So rewriting this a little bit, we can then say that uh, minus 1 divided by x plus c1 equals t plus c2. Uh, let's see here. I want to bring the c1 over to that side, call it c3. So we have minus 1 over x is equal to um, t plus c3 because if I take c2 minus c1, I'll just call it c3. Then I want to multiply both sides by negative 1. So now I get, oh, let me come over here, got a little bit more room. So multiply both sides by negative 1, I get 1 over x is equal to uh, c3 minus t, because I multiply both sides by negative 1. Now I want to take the inverse of that. So I can say that x over 1, or simply x, is equal to 1 over c minus t. So I'm going to let c equals c3, because now I just have one constant left, so I'll just call it c. And what I've done now is I've actually solved my differential equation. I found the function x as a function of t, and that's what it looks like. Basically, x, which is a function of t, is equal to 1 divided by some constant minus t. And notice that it can be an infinite number of solutions because c can be any value. c can be 1, c can be 2, c can be 3, c can be 4. The only thing that c cannot be is t at any point in time, of course, because then you have zero in the denominator. But here, this is the solution to this differential equation. Now, to verify if it's indeed correct, let's go ahead and plug in what uh, this is equal to. So we'll plug in an x squared on the right side, and we have a dx dt on the left side. So, to check, we have uh, dx dt, dx dt, is equal to x squared. So what we're going to do is square the right side, and so that means that dx dt should equal this quantity squared, so it's 1 divided by c minus t quantity squared. All right, so is that indeed correct? Well, let's take the derivative of this and see what we get. So what we're saying is the derivative with respect to time of x should equal that. Well, let's find out if that's true. So we're going to take the derivative, the dx dt, which means we're going to take the denominator because it's a quotient, so we'll take the denominator, c minus t, times the derivative of the denominator, which is 0, minus the denominator, which is 1, times the derivative of the denominator, and of course, that with respect to time, that's a constant, and so that would be a minus 1, all divided by the denominator squared, which is c minus t quantity squared. Simplifying that, notice that this portion goes to 0, and a minus times a minus is plus, so we have a plus 1 divided by the quantity c minus t quantity squared. And notice, that is the left side of my equation, so when I replace the dx dt by that, I can then say that 
1 divided by c minus t quantity squared is equal to 1 divided by the quantity c minus t quantity squared and therefore I verified that I got the correct solution for my differential equation. So again this is just one of the many techniques it's called separation of variables and it's a technique that you've probably already learned how to do if you took calculus before but you'll see that many other techniques you'll have to learn as well which you might not have seen yet in your calculus course but here's a differential equation here's the solution to the differential equation sometimes it's easier to write it like that realizing that x is a function of time and that's why I wrote it like this but it's basically the same thing and then to verify it we then do a check we write our original differential equation we take our solution x, we square it, we put on the right side of the equation, and then we take the derivative of x with respect to time, put on the left side of the equation, and you can see they're both the same, and therefore we found the correct solution to our differential equation. So that's what we mean by a solution of a differential equation. It's simply a function of that variable, a function, in this case, of t. And that's how it's done.